scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord he says and I will set up shepherds over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear. They no longer are in dismay. And that they neither be lacking, saith the Lord. And so, when God anoints a man, a minister of the gospel, you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity is a transfer this is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word that while you are sitting right now listening to me there is a spiritual transfer something is entering your spirit ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 it says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet let me tell you something without the ministration of the spirit every other thing we are doing is just noise it is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believe on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good. It should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word, word is logos. Right? And Jesus the word is called the living logos. Is a person you can listen to my message the living logos meaning the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart and I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just Rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on god to get spiritual information you see the distinguishing factor let me tell you something many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives not necessarily not necessarily there is a spirit that is behind scripture one time the lord opened my eyes and when the lord opened my eyes i was in a vision and i saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations or greek and hebrew somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read greek and hebrew and express you know the words in greek and hebrew and bring new words we think that the anointing is in the greek or the anointing is in the hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years People can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um, uh, you know accounting timekeeping 
other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ but what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can I tell you something? The ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic. It's about the presence of God changing you. Meaning, if we come here and all we do is to sing, you should still live transformed. Because you see, the, the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone. When you are sitting in an atmosphere, something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? Eternal life is the divine life 
God's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of God it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that God has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of God had not life watch this the Bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving Jesus that means you're coming to Christ or you're coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you the Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself right the Son of God so the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God that's why we preach that's why souls must be won. So it's, it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone. It's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. Because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven, you would have left immediately you gave your life to Christ. So the technology is, of course, it secures your eternal destiny. But the Bible says God gave us life. But that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of Galatians chapter 3 
right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right 
and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the Son has eternal life. Two verse 7 and 8. Let's look at 7 and 8. Hebrews 2 verse 7 and 8. It says, Thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels right has he said at any point thou art my son you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right it says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that it, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earthwork of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life i authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life Are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father 
by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said, all hail, he told the disciples. He says, all authority, exousia, delegated power has been given to me. When he was in the earth, all authority, let me say something that looks controversial. When he was in the earth, all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him. I hope you know. Absolutely. That's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power, he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam. That dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given. He says, go in that light. In other words, in Christ, the Bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named, both in this life and in the life to come. That's what the apostle was trying to explain there. But he leaves a disclaimer. He says, but now, everybody say, but now. Are you seeing? In Christ, all things have been perfected. But now, the experience of that reality it says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles. Is it that you can't bring us down from the cross? Another person was saying, when you get there. So they were all thinking of a lot of things. But Jesus said today, he was giving him a revelation that in Christ, there is an experience. So in Christ, you are healed. In Christ, you are prosperous. Is that true? In Christ, you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything. But then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ 
and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting a point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see it. oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of god have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. 
in fact let's start okay verse 5 everyone read it says for they that are after the flesh do what do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit verse 6 for to be what stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what dead but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies 
here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say Kai, i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid me i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid right spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth 
I am reality. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact, any transformation. You see that? For me, the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you. He is what you call eternal life. If you are not aware of that, be aware. Eternal life is not what he brings. His very presence is the life of God. Jesus never became the Christ. He was the son of the carpenter. He could die. That's why his parents ran away with him. But when the spirit of God came, he made him the Christ. So when the Bible says in Christ, it's not just saying in Jesus alone. In Jesus, yes, but together with the spirit of life. Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me. You see, we need to examine. It was, talk, it was a spiritual language. It was not even just talking about hearing with the ear. There is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings. And that's what produces true faith. Because when the Bible says hearing and hearing by the word, at that time, there was no books like this. King James had not authorized this. So what did they call the word? The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. Up. It's not today. It has been like that. Another person is saying, it's not only you, two of us too. Another person is saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh yeah. You see, everybody is confessing one by one. One by one. The meaning of that is, darkness is about to reveal itself publicly. Right? And it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim. Someone is building a house with blocks and cement. When you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week, one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks. It will scatter everything. What sort of wind is that? Is it now wind started? How many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say, they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens This is a spiritual generation. Listen, this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious. To be spiritually minded. The Holy Spirit is the advantage of this generation. I am convinced that we are the generation that will return Christ. Yes, I am convinced. The Bible specifically talks about a number of things that... As we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah 
that we discern spiritual things. Let me give you an instance. Hold on, let me explain something. How many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in 1 Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I mean, too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uzzah in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you. You are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, 
This is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We're saying that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how it would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come and we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven. Real oil. Physical oil. You would have seen the foot of real angels. That you are not pressing into God doesn't mean some other people are not. The divine life. We shout Zoe. We shout Zoe. But there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society. And it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you. If we learn how to receive that Zoe life. You will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow I had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is God speaking to tonight where have you reduced God let me tell you one day maybe I'll come in the night I'll bring a chair here one coin on here 
we'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people he said privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning it was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody say i've seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that yet the bible says are they not ministering spirit i'm showing you why we have become carnal we threw away the holy spirit we are gradually kicking the holy spirit out in a bit to do what we call word 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 right word 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 just the word give it the word and, and don't give me anything else there are even people who reject jesus and say just give me bible give me bible jesus go once it's not bible even jesus should go away and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but Elijah, not in a radio station, he made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory and I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head. 
how many men of God have disgraced themselves on television how many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of God predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see how we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speakings over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of God in these days the Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week I've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will, the Lord will be visiting me and his presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room and I'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. He says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. 
There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise and because i did not minister in truth my lie will do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you how many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God. Eventually as we started getting some results in our lives, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out. Now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures, it means we are growing spiritually. Do you not see the need in our world today? There are people with HIV, cancer. There are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have. We claim to have Zoe. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Then demonstrate it. He said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshipping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials where in a sleep you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you right i want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power and when you wake up in the morning like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me I remember a time in my life when I would sleep in the night. This happened for almost two months. And at least one of God's generals will come to me in dreams. Explaining to me their perspectives. I remember many of the people that I've browsed and I've taken from their lives. I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, it was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald-headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No. No. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. 
the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by God it was the spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth now I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying koinonia hear me if we throw away the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God let me have somebody here just one person anybody we a visitor we a pastor don't worry you came all the way oh you served in Jigawa and you are here right now your face is new the Lord will use you greatly I know you came with a hunger from your heart I'll use you as an example and may that example be your experience huh? hallelujah watch this this is how God designed us to walk never separated from the Holy Spirit if you are looking for women look for it with him if he approves it then he's right are you hearing what I'm saying if you are talking about ladies let it be with his presence if you are eating let it be with him see let me tell you something the Holy Spirit is not a person you leave and then when you come for koinonia, oh sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you and, and all those things you say I, I love you, you are my all in all, you are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the, and then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now right, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartations. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about, the real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for a retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement, you don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple your temple now not a building is filled with his glory and songs begin to come look at what musicians write nonsense they, they write songs that don't bless anybody they just come up with songs the reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought. But they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time? Because of your teaching. Someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting because there is a hunger. It's not a conference, it's not a convention, but hunger brought him. Right? 
God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened. Ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do its best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming even if you are not interested there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit for you to do that you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension but how many people are that willing bless you how many people are that willing how many people are that willing to see the power of God transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach I don't like people turning to me and say man of God your message was powerful powerful in what I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. 
and I called the woman out and standing face to face I said I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth one time Benihim was laying hands on people and they were falling down and Ora Roberts looked at him and said Benny don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that, you'll come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you and then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up. Very quickly. In San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances miracles all those good things with people deepening in their worship and and loving the Word of God and so it's a it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out so we're at the house of uh, restoration and mercy with pastor Dennis Roja and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met he's so precious has just a small uh, work and a very humble work it reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things um, pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible it's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium and then as he squeezes the Bible the oil comes out copious amounts of oil this particular oil smells like myrrh it's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, 
manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats. And it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. They will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away. The cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying and they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in, 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 in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied, 
in Acts chapter 2, he said, In the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to is not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. The spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth. Fountains of the deep cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh see. You ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are 
are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 You are mighty on your throne.
miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Cardos. You are mighty on your throne. We sing. You ancient iron steam. Cry out, Cardos. You are mighty on your throne. The spirit of the deep cry out in our midst, oh God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father, Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power, a ministry of the spirit that can change lives. We will not deviate from the part of the apostles. We will not deviate from the part of the prophets. We will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress. We will not deviate. We refuse to bend. We refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne.
שלום, שלום, תבואו בשלום, שלום, you're welcome in my life, שלום, שלום, תבואו בשלום, שלום, you're welcome in this place. You must walk conscious from today if you have received the Son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. I am determined to be supernatural in every way. In every way. No, the sons of God are not natural people. They are supernatural. In every way. Pray. My hands are supernatural. My words are supernatural. Lift your voice and pray. My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power. The Sowell life. The power to heal. The power to alter the destinies of people. The power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial, 
has become celestial and heavenly i pray in the name of jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life that your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders that when men need god to show up they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory i pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven may your words no longer be barren and powerless may your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you may they bring healing may the words bring grace may they bring life like the river in ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life i pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of god's people may you step into an unusual dimension i'd like you to receive what i'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the zoe life not just that which is in christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of god you took the life of heaven so way the life that controls heaven so way the life that upholds all things i'm praying for you that everything that has defied god in your life in the name that is above all names may that zoe life come upon it right now may that zoe life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of god let it come upon every dying spiritual life every lukewarm spiritual life the life that makes men doubt whether god is working with you or not i pray for you let it change from tonight you don't have to tell people you're a man of god carry that life carry that divine life may that life hold sickness from your body permanently this repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the lord's body so that you will be strong discern the lord's body father i pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and i stretch my hands and i pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now i declare in the name of jesus that it leaves your body and your life now i cause every pain i cause every situation that is attempting to challenge god in your life in the name of jesus christ may the lord put a testimony in your mouth 
that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life-giving spirit a life-giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to joshua sermon or bring him to this tell him in the name of jesus i agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all i'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the holy spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone i'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed go with him when you stand on that stage even if you do not know what to say realize that there is one the spirit of life as you stand to sing and minister realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies but you are ministering life and you will be amazed to see people change don't be afraid of confronting situations with god without god there are many things that are not possible hallelujah treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come nothing in this world says Jesus, you are the calm that would run dry. We live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed. God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush many of us the spirit of god is speaking to someone here you need to calm down the way you are running with your life you are going to land in trouble the way you are running with ministry you will land in trouble the way you are approaching marriage the way you are approaching destiny you will land in trouble culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch my soul wait thou upon the lord god is a god of speed but until he speaks you are on your own it's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we are rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why well, say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul waits down upon the lord 
it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. No. There are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of God your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, the excellency of waiting. The hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. It's easy to rush. It's easy to do a lot of things. You will make more mistakes in your life rushing. There is power in waiting. Are we together? There is power in waiting. We're going to pray for the sick now. There's a lot to do tonight. But listen very carefully. If this message is for you, then I want you to receive it from the depth of your heart. You know, when we come like this, there are various things that the Lord is doing to several people. Not everyone is sick. Not everyone is oppressed. But a word can come and God says, be careful. There are people about to relocate now to regions. They have not sought God. They just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern, appreciate, and reward value. That's all. They have a greater propensity to discern, to appreciate, and to reward value. You can be where you are if you are truly directed by God and He will come to you and bless you. Are we together now? How many of you are trusting the Lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we are going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down 
and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife creator of the universe what can you do what can you do trying to embarrass this precious lady I don't know you I'm just seeing you for the first time I'm not a woman so I can't pretend to say I know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and I'm asking it boldly do you believe that God can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. Social help her. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. Just, just hold on. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm seeing the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. 
the lord is rolling away the reproach in your life and the lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life in the name of jesus christ the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder therefore in the name of jesus i declare to you not only will you or your brother be healed i decree and declare salvation comes to your family now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please sing for us that song creator of the universe creator of the universe in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing fibroid is that true how long seven years fibroid confirmed in the hospital that devil is going to leave you now 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I'm not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God. Oh, 
the Lord. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Please keep praying, keep praying. Let it become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. So after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required for my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and please pray. Every dimension. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. That's the next prayer point. We prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. One more time. Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palmer worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty I cause failure pray Jesus cause the victory Jesus I decree and declare that my help comes from above I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord and in this season I prophesy to my destiny a believer receive the help of God lift your voice and pray come for help
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Was he praying? Many of us here, all you need is the ministry of helpers. Are we together now? The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Do you know why he spoke about the hills? Because God used the strategy of the hill to protect the people. Every time there was war, he would lead them up the hill. And if they got there, there would always be victory. Remember Elijah. When, it, when there was time for any contest, he would say, go up the hill. Mount Carmel, Mount Zion, Mount this and that. And so he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But he said, no, no, no where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man. Blessed is a man that finds help from God. Many people are suffering because there is no help. Life can be cheap when there is help. Believe me when I tell you this. How much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it? How much is it? What is the job issue with a single signature? A man's life can change but i told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default i'd like you to cry father in this season i'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus was you praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are package your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at the church? my god arise for me as a helper Shaka Barakatosh, Shaka Taka 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 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream. And then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen. You are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> in Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful, they will not persecute him. But he was one out of many. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to one person. And the brother said, no way. And they walked him out. My Bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household. Sometimes it's not binding and casting. Lord, show them mercy too. So that as I'm rejoicing, they will rejoice and leave me in peace. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. I provoke divine help over my loved ones. I prophesy to them that in this season, Receive the help of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Financial help. Spiritual help. Career help. Help, oh God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37. And he took me in the spirit of the Lord. And he took me to a valley. And the Bible says that valley was full of bones. And it says the bones were very dry. Bones don't dry up in one day. It means they have been there for a long time. We want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go. You were born and you met that problem. You have become an adult. You have met that. No, no, no. It must go. That it has stayed long does not mean it's valid. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All ministry, hear the word of the Lord. All business, hear the word of the Lord. All destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of a king is, there is power. 
and he said son of man what seest thou he said son of man prophesy to these bones and say oh bones hear ye the word of the lord and all of that he said and as i prophesied as i was commanded there was a sound and then a shaking notice that the bones began to look for themselves meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves and then the bones were there but there was no life he says son of man prophesy again to the four winds and say oh wind breathe upon this lane and the wind came and breathed upon the bones and there arose an exceeding great army listen God is able God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight he said have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as Zion travails we know that birth is nine months but something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can burn overnight with no root I like you to say Lord let the supernatural work in my life in this season business at a supernatural rate ministry at a supernatural rate if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in my eyes lift your voice and pray as soon as Zion travails as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son as soon as Zion travails pray hallelujah hallelujah the apostle said i desired once again to come to you but satan hindered us your breakthrough desire to come to you but satan hindered it your helpers desire to come to you have you seen a situation Jimmy, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time brothers and sisters this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom are we together it says do not be ignorant of the devices the methodologies from the word stratomai the methodology of satan there are methods he said do not let your good be evil spoken of have you seen that that's a method that i call you and satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm I just call you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they don't, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same is the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today 
you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live and i sat now i was talking with the family and the man was just looking you know you know all this do do and leave my house until by the mercies of god god began to speak to him at the end of it it was him that escorted me out say ah, ah you are you are you know my friend they collected my i said look at this man would have missed this miracle brothers and sisters some of our loved ones you know what i'm saying are like that their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years they organize a program near your house and they say no 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 once it is not you it is not god it's an error what of business opportunities just because people have been scammed here just because something came out and something happened there anything business god forbid don't even mention anything oh sorry yes no 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 don't talk to me and then you remain poor and broke and say god what is wrong he told joshua be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen. A helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. Some men came to David in a cave called Adullam and they vowed that we must make you king. You are seeing a man who is already weak. No result. Ah, when your helpers come to you, it will look like a charm. There will be no reason for them to remain. They will call you. Have you gotten the job, sir? No, sir. Ah, after, okay, I'm going to Abuja for you. And you start saying, I hope there's no string attached. No, 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 no. I only saw myself helping you in a dream. Are we together? Every destiny helper has those in need. Please hear me. 
graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved god changes the rules as if it's unfair to you Habba, there is such a dimension the helper of israel when you labor and labor and labor and labor you'll be lying to say you are giving god glory there are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality the way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when god places a demand greed has an explanation when you when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship you can't give but if it's freely you received if freely you will give are we together your destiny is one helper away by the privilege of god's grace i've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people and overnight they got jobs without interview just because i happen to know someone in a position of influence and i say sir please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken is the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of god there are pastors that need the help of god you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by god to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men establish within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenged him and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen i know that it looks like it's just a joke but it's a serious issue how many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help no help ask the medical doctors they will tell you you buy a car alone you look for food alone you walk alone you seek counsel by yourself you advise yourself no helper you see people moving like cane all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bolaji do you know sometimes pastor bolaji would call me and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god i've been spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70% of the invitations where I go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of God I know See, all these people from the north no 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 I know this one 
who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take Mordecai uh, Mordecai Mordecai is outside but Mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take God using someone inside Joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to, send them my way I, I, I cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of God my help cometh from the Lord they were many widows in Zarephath they all needed help but to none was Elijah sent except a widow in Zarephath how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but God chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occults all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few There are many of you with business ideas. There are many of you with ministries. There are many of you desperately waiting for a job. And men are beginning to say, where is your God? You are no longer young. You have been praying and fasting and doing all of this. If you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with God, we will stop you from coming for koinonia. Or we will stop you from doing this. And God wants to arise and prove himself mighty. Why won't you pray well when you eat well? why wouldn't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i 
have the privilege by the message of God to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and I see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a Jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what Satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father says, if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he say but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the heart to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like naaman you may be the captain of a great army the bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life i'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present christ well let's cry together and say god you have done well in this area and i thank you but lord i cry that in this area 
may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the Lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you Lord you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor keep praying I just want to say thank you so many Stretch your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray. This is a representation of our pain. It's a representation of our needs. Just cry to the Lord. my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues Lord there are issues here that only God can solve. Some of the issues represented here are life and death issues. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you with all our hearts. We will lift our hands to you in worship. And we will worship with all my heart. 
Lord, I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. And I will lift my voice to you in worship. I will worship. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. I speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before God be turned now into supernatural testimonies may God turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ just give me two three minutes and we're done I want to speak over your life now when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands Represented here, fresh fire upon your altar, fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Every issue of concern in your career, in your business, and in your life, I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the Garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemy to be at peace with him. I declare, whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise. I command peace to happen between you. Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I want to prophesy to you where you failed before go back again with an anointing go back with the grace that makes men succeed in the name of jesus christ and the lord visited sarah and she called the name of her son isaac he said all those who hear about this will laugh with me i introduce you to a new season of laughter 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 turn again our captivities 
like the streams of the naked i pray for you it will be like a dream of the night the way god will turn your life around anyone here under the plague of death any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy i decree oh death where is thy sting and oh grave where is thy victory i command death to pass from over you in the name of jesus he said let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield i command your ground to produce for you daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a god that revealed secrets i pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my god open your eyes to see it and the bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declared, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah Paradventure, adventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire and I'm saying I need Jesus if you belong to any of these categories I like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the Holy Spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first God bless you are you appreciating them in the name of Jesus Christ there has to be someone making a decision for Jesus God bless you God bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war God bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front 
God bless you. Keep coming. We have one minute for you. If you're coming from outside, please double up your steps very quickly. Very quickly. Say, call for total surrender. Lord, you gave me your life. I'm giving you mine right now. Are there people still coming? Make your way very quickly. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. I've been around the things of God, but I'm not exactly sure. Join them. Join them quickly. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. Those who were lost and those who were saved. No in-betweens. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you. If you are joining them, please join them very quickly. Overflow 3, you can move to the front of your projector. Those online giving their hearts to Jesus, just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to lift your right hand sincerely. You are not reciting a poem. You are speaking to the Lord. And he's here listening to you. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for me. I believe that you were raised up for my justification. Tonight, I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in return. I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is broken over my life. I declare that I'm a child of God. I am saved. The grace to walk in victory, to walk in liberty is mine now in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. We thank you for bringing these ones out. No man can come to the Father except you draw them. Lord Jesus, I pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom, let it be supplied your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life and I decree that you are going forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ, every challenge you came here with, as a result of this new life, let new victories come for you. In Jesus' name I pray. A big congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Now, I want you to follow someone waving his hands. There's a gentleman waving his hands there. Can I see who is waving his hands now? Please, very quickly, I'd like you to follow him. All of you in concert, just follow the gentleman. There will be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly. Let's honor them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.